Good morning, dolls, and welcome to Little Gretchen's Workshop. So today I'm making a round top door, which is actually a commission piece for my very special friend, Joanne. And in light of my process and the materials I'm using today, this video is dedicated to a STEM education teacher named Crystal Evans, and she teaches in Smyrna, Georgia. She interviewed me on her YouTube channel, but due to guidelines, I can't add a link to that video. Now, Joanne gave me the measurements for her door opening, and because the top of the door needed to be round, I used a tape measure to help me get the curve. Now, if you're new to the channel, I want you to know that I am trying to discipline myself to use my measuring tools. I have not been accustomed to using standardized measuring tools and devices in my build. Historically, I've done a lot of freestyling, eyeballing, and finger measurements. And it's always challenging learning to use new tools or doing something that you're not used to doing. You have to allow yourself to be uncomfortable for a little while while you're learning and not to be afraid of making mistakes. Now to get that curve at the top of my door, I use my Gorilla Wood Glue bottle by tracing around it on the graph paper. And although I'm using my tools, I'm struggling to keep little Gretchen in check. Now in Joanne's order, she said that she needed the door to be 14 inches all the way around the opening. That's why I was using my tape measure to measure around the outside of my template. And then it needed to be two and one eighth inches wide or across. Now, I don't know if you dolls can tell, but I'm even a little bit uncomfortable describing fractions. Now, here I am going back with my template over to the piece of wood that I cut the original piece of wood out of, which I call my core. Now, dolls, my go-to for making my dollhouse furniture builds is 1 16th of an inch basswood. That's my favorite, and it's probably my favorite because it was always available, and it's reasonably priced. Now you may wonder why I call this part of the door my core. It's because I'm gonna cover both sides with some really thin, inexpensive coffee stir sticks. Now these are thinner than the birch wood sticks and they're really great because they almost give the feeling of like a veneer rather than being heavier and thicker like the popsicle sticks. Now you could definitely use popsicle sticks or even the thick jumbo craft sticks to do this very same thing. And you could even use it on top of cardboard. Now here I'm just lining up a few of the sticks to kind of get a feel of how it would look. So I'm gonna start by covering one side of it with my Gorilla Wood glue. And then I use the old credit card or insurance card to spread the glue evenly. And then one by one, I lined up the sticks on the surface of the door. Now dolls, I didn't cut it exactly even across the top where the door is arched or around it at the top. I'll cut off the extensions after the door is dry. Now, although these sticks are wooden, they're very, very thin and they can be cut really easily with your craft knife or some electrical scissors. Now, dolls, you can clamp those down and keep going. Just make sure that they're aligned straight and not crowding, bunching, or overlapping each other. Now, it would be a really good idea to allow that one side to dry solid before you move on. And to ensure that it dried flat, I put a piece of granite on top. When it was dry, I duplicated my process on the other side. And when the second side was done, I put another piece of granite on that. Now, while the large part was sandwiched between the two pieces of granite, I added glue to the uncovered part of the door and added the additional sticks. Now, dolls, those pieces can definitely be random spares and remnants because you don't need a full piece. And after the large part was dry, I flipped it over and continued on to the other side. Now, at this point, I'm sure some of you all are concerned by the zigzag or uneven placement of the sticks at the bottom. The part that I'm going to use to create a divider or partition will cover up those inconsistent lines. Now, here I am adding my glue right across those little uneven lines. And now that I've added the coffee stir stick to the glue, you don't notice any of that. Now, although I didn't have anything to conceal at the top, I did want to keep the design consistent. Now, this little bar was a little bit long, so I did kind of cut it a little bit to score it so I would know where to cut it. Now, dolls, that's not really the way that you should use a saw. I don't have a handle or anything. I just scored it so that I would know where to cut it with my easy cutter. Now from this angle, you can see I do need to trim some more off the top and sand it. But before I do any more trimming or sanding, I want it to dry solid overnight. Now that I'm confident that my structure is solid and everything is dry, I'm able to freely sand around the 
rounded part of the door to make sure everything is smooth and even. Now, as I was sanding, getting to the original structure, I did notice some gaps around the top. So I did add a little bit of wood putty. Now, this is called plastic wood. It stains and sands just like real wood, and it has a natural color. Now, I only did this around the top and at the bottom. So now, dolls, the next thing I did was to create that bar that goes diagonally across. And I needed to cut the ends sort of at an angle so they would fit neatly against the bars at the the bottom and at the top. So dolls, although I'm using my measuring tools and things like that, I really haven't disciplined myself to using a miter box properly. So I'm actually using the angle of the bars to cut off the edge to make it fit at the bottom of the door. Now this is absolutely not a best practice. Always be careful with your hands and your fingers. But it's what I did to score it and then I used the granite block to use it as my cutting surface and I cut off the little edge. After I made my imitation miter cuts, I went ahead and sized it to make sure it fit neatly between the two bars on the door. After I was comfortable with the fit of my diagonal bar, I sparingly added glue to the under surface of the stick and then gently laid it in place on my door. Careful not to get any glue anywhere else other than under the part where it was supposed to be secured. And after everything was positioned properly, I used some binder clips and clothespins to hold everything in place while it dried. Now, while the door was drying, I went on to think about the handle for the door. I'm using a large paper clip to create a handle to make it look like something kind of, uh, not necessarily medieval, but just kind of common and metal. Now I'm using it to try to bend it into the shape of the handle that I want, and then I'm going to mount it on the door. Now be very careful, I'm using the wire cutters after I got it to the size that I wanted it to be, and I'm also using the pliers to make it a little bit narrower or smaller to give it the proper type of bend. It's really the same concept that I've used when I make towel racks for my bathrooms, but in this process, there are no earrings involved. <laughs> now, in my original idea, I was going to mount it directly to the door, but I thought a handle plate would be a nice detail. And although that little piece of wood was a nice size, it wasn't giving the silhouette that I wanted. So I used one of the birch wood coffee stir sticks to trim it down to size. And after playing around with the idea of mounting it to the little piece of wood, I sanded it and then I marked it where I was going to drill my holes. Now that was its best practice to use a pencil. I just happened to have a pen handy and I used a simple hand pen drill to drill my holes so that I could insert the paper clip into the handle plate. And after I drilled through both holes on both sides and made sure they both went all the way through, I dry fitted the paper clip in the holes to make sure that it would line up properly before I added my glue. After I added my handle, it was time for me to allow that to dry so everything would be nice and solid before I began to stain and age the door. Now it's time for the fun part, which I consider the detailing and the aging of the door. So this is some of my Verathane Jacobean stain. Now dolls, again, I'm doing something that I'm telling you not to do, but I do it. You should not use your stain directly from the can because you can contaminate it with the brush. Best practice would be to shake it well and put a little bit of the stain into a smaller container for your project. But that's not what I do, dolls. Now, when I was almost done staining my door, I remembered I had nitrile gloves. Now, nitrile gloves are great for protecting your hands while you're staining or refinishing or using solvents like acetone or lacquer thinner. Although I didn't have my gloves on during the full staining process, I did want to be a good example to my precious dolls. Okay, Laura. <laughs> Now, if you're new to my channel, this would be an opportunity for you to see how I like to layer my colors. So I used a lighter color first, and after that got in, I came back with a darker color. I really believe in layering the colors or the stains because I think it makes the color deeper and richer and actually lends more to the impression of years of wear and oxidation. So while the stains were soaking in, I went on to work on a few more of the details. 
So I'm mixing up some of my alcohol and acrylic paint to make a little wash to aid some tiny brass keys. Now before I started in on the keys, I added a little bit to the actual handle and the door handle plate to give a little distinction between that and that of the door. And while that was drying, I went on to add the little tiny brass keys to the mixture to make them look aged and rusted. Now I didn't show it here, but I did add some antique gold rubbing buff to tone down the bright brass. Now although Joanne didn't want her door to have brass studs all over it and look really medieval, I did add a couple little brass studs to the door handle just to give a little detail for the door plate to make it look like it was riveted or nailed together. To me at this point it's looking a little wrought iron which makes me really really happy. Now still in the vein and attitude of staining, aging, and oxidizing the door, using the same paint and alcohol wash, I'm adding a little bit more darkening or staining to parts of the door that I think would have gotten extra wear and tear. I truly love this solution because the alcohol causes the whole solution to dry or evaporate really quickly. So you're not waiting hours for the water to dry out of the wood before you can seal your work. Now if you're satisfied with all your aging, distressing, and oxidizing, you want to go ahead and seal your work. Now I use Mod Podge. Now if you wanted your door to be shiny, you definitely could use some type of varnish. But this matte Mod Podge I think is going to seal everything nicely and it's not going to take away from what I've done. Now, my Mod Podge is a little bit thick, dolls. Don't be concerned. It does look a little thick and murky, but it's going to dry absolutely clear. Now, dolls, although my channel is not for children at all, but this channel was absolutely born out of a child's love for miniatures. And this was one of my favorite books during those years. This book was published in 1968, and it was the first dollhouse instruction book that I had ever seen. And although it was a wonderful book, it had a lot of measurements and a lot of things that seemed pretty technical for things being made out of paper, remnants, and trash. And although I do think it was a wonderful book at the time, I think sometimes it made things seem a little bit complicated and it seemed to take a little bit of the fun and play out of making dollhouse items. By the time I stopped reading that book, my dad gave me this one when I was about 10 years old, right after he bought my dollhouse, and it was called The Complete Book of Making Miniatures. And although it was published in 1975, it again had a lot of lovely black and white pictures. Oh, it did have a colorful centerfold, but most of the things in the book were made with high-tech or high-powered machinery things that were absolutely out of my reach as a 10-year-old child. And I think that's why sometimes my techniques and methods are the way they are, because I don't want miniatures to be out of reach to anyone. They're not only for the highly skilled or the elite. Miniatures are for everyone. When the teacher from the Russell Elementary School in Georgia, Miss Evans, reached out to me to do an interview about my channel, she sent me some pictures of some of the work the children had done based on her instruction for them to create with what they had. When I saw these pictures, it reminded me of how I got started in miniatures. So dolls, let me finish this door before I get emotional. So I wanted to make a little lock for the door to go along with the keys. So I cut a tiny piece of wood and I added a little half piece of a jump ring to the top. I drilled some little holes so that the jump ring would fit and I wanted to leave the lock open so that it would be removable. Now I did use some of my testers aluminum paint to paint it a, a metallic silver color and make it look a little rough and rusty and then I did go ahead and add my alcohol and acrylic paint wash to dull up those tiny nail art studs that I add to it to make it look like rivets. I think that looks good. I think it looks nice and old and rusty and like it's been hanging around on that door handle for years. <laughs> now, if you enjoyed this video today and want to see more content like this, go ahead and subscribe and also let me know in the comments. 
And if you'd like to support this channel, you can now buy me a coffee. There's a link in the description. And I'm looking forward to seeing you on the next episode of Little Gretchen's Workshop. Bye-bye now, dolls.